comes up right now. Good morning and welcome to the Joy Business Report. Coming up, former president of the Ghana Association of Banks, Alassane and Danny assures viable projects will not suffer despite moves by commercial banks to scale back on lending. IMF Executive Board to consider Ghana's first review report by staff in November this year. We have details from Director of Communications and the Fund, Julia Kozak. And on our business journal, we look at how entrepreneur Prince Minta is taking advantage of post harvest losses to make business out of mushroom juice. My name is George Uyafe. Let's now settle for the details. A former president of the Ghana Association of Banks, Na Dr. Hassan Andani, has maintained that viable projects will be funded by the commercial banks. Now, this is despite moves by banks to cut back on lending as a result of rising on performing loans in the current economic challenges. The former president of the Ghana Association of Banks has been speaking on PM Express Business Edition. But if the George Wafi is a triple A business and needs credit, and I know that the external environment, no matter how severe, he's insulated. Mm -hmm. His internal processes are solid. I'll go wherever I can to get the money and give to George Wafi. So it's not necessarily when you say credit is uh, slowed down that it just grinds to zero. No, the George Wafi is with triple A rating, mm -hmm. you know, good. Uh, sort of mitigants against external pressures, good internal systems that their clients are not suffering because they don't have funny money to buy their goods and services. Yeah, those ones, triple, triple A, we will find the money. The banks will find money to keep you going. The, the banks? So the, so the credit doesn't grind to zero. Yeah, but yeah. the good ones are still going to oh, be yeah, the, the good ones will still. Former president of the Ghana Association of uh, Banks, and, uh, Dr. Al Hassan and Danny, there. And a repeat of this interview will be at 11 a.m. on Joy News later this morning. IMF Executive Board will consider Ghana's first review assessment report in November this year. This will pave the way for the approval and disbursement of some $600 million to Ghana that is in that month if the country passes the assessment. Responding to a question from a journalist in Washington, D.C., USA Director of Communications at the IMF, Julia Kozat, said Ghana is making some good progress on the program. A mission is currently in Accra to assess performance and discuss policies for the first review of the program with a view to presenting the, the review to the executive board. The next steps on debt restructuring are for the official creditor committee to agree with the authorities on the specific modalities of debt relief and for the authorities to continue to engage with their external private creditors um, for relief on their external debt. Uh, these discussions are ongoing and we hope that the OCC the official creditor committee and the Ghanaian authorities will find an agreement soon. Uh, the government has recently finalized the restructuring of its domestic debt. Director of Communications at the IMF, Julia Kozak, answering questions from journalists in Washington, D.C. Economist Dr. Patrick Sumi has ruled out any significant impact of Cocoa Board's decision to raise about $800 million as part of its syndication program on the Ghana City's fortunes. According to him, the move will not in any way impact on the local currency. The Cocoa Syndicated Loans has been a significant foreign exchange inflow for government. Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison, during a media engagement said Cocoa Board will in the coming weeks sign $800 million syndication loans with the commercial banks, a figure far below funds that have been raised over the years. But Dr. Simon has a view that the amount will not affect the city going forward. He's seen from the recent summary of economic and financial data, the country is earning a lot more from others who realize that compared to last, raising more. And also at the moment, because of the debt restriction, we are not really paying off our foreign debt. We are not servicing the foreign loans. So in some sense, even though ordinarily it should, it should have been bad news for the currency, but because of our current circumstances, perhaps we only have too much of an impact. And that is economist uh, Dr. Patrick Esuming. 
Ghana Revenue Authority is reiterating the call for consumers to support nationwide tax compliance drive by paying their value at the tax on purchases made and demanding receipts. According to the authority, many people have been aiding businesses to evade taxes but failing to demand VAT invoices and receipts whenever there is, is a transaction is done. Assistant Commissioner for Compliance at the Authority, Accra Center Joseph Annan, disclosed this that is demanding this invoice is not an offense. We are on the field, and that is what we have been paid to do. So we will not relent, we will not get tired. So long as we have been paid to do a job, we shall surely do it. So then we want to advise the public that please, when you buy, please demand your VAT invoice. And to the taxpayers, please make sure that you comply with the law. Because when you do not, we will come. And when we come and you are not doing the right thing, we will surely try and then bring you to book. Assistant Commissioner for Compliance at the Ghana Revenue Authority, Accra Central, Joseph Annan. Still on taxes, players in the e-commerce space have called on government to reconsider decision to tax activities of the sector. Speaking to Joy Business President of the Ghana Fintech and Payment Association, Matt Nawanga explained that the space is an emerging one and therefore it creates employment for the youth. He's been speaking at the second e-commerce forum in his vision organized by GIZ. I tend to be fascinated about government taxation mechanisms because if you look at it, in as much as we applaud government's urge to garner more revenue, there are also other different uh, avenues to do that. For instance, we have a lot of properties around Ghana or in Ghana that are not taxed. This is something that I think calls for revenue measures. And so government should look at some of these other additional sources of income than taxing a nascent or new industry that is now trying to emerge or providing opportunities for every other spectrum of the economic ladder. And of course, that is Matt Mengwa, his president of the Ghana Fintech and Payment Association. Five more institutions have been picked up for non-compliance by the country's data protection laws in the latest round of an enforcement action by the commission. The institutions include Carelight Flight Clinic, Embassy Gardens, Morning Star School, Grace Homophobic, that is Clinic, which have actually been found operating without data protection license. The fifth company, Scapfarm, although registered, had breached sections of the data protection laws. Regulatory and Compliance Director at the Commission, Quentin Akrobatu, led the enforcement action and addressed the media. And this exercise, as we have said, has come to stay. It will continue on a monthly basis. And institutions who are yet to register with the commission should take note from this and quickly come and register with the commission. Those institutions who have registered but their registration licenses have expired and they haven't renewed them should quickly come and renew them because this exercise will expand in scope to cover registrations, renewals, and complaints that we receive from uh, 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 the, the, the public as far as processing of personal data is concerned. Regulatory and Compliance Director of the Data Protection Commission, Quentin Akrobatu. On our business journal today, we take a visit to an entrepreneur, Prince Menta, taking advantage of post harvest losses to make business out of mushroom juice. He's therefore asking for some support so they could process more mushrooms for Ghanaian market to expand to other countries under the continental free trade area. Lava Femmes Millennials and Pom 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 engage Prince and other farmers who say the value addition of mushroom will be made a gold mine for them going forward. <laughs> Juliana, a Mwakos mushroom farm, sits in her living room. Having started mushroom farming in 2018, she won the 2019 Best Farmer in the Oforikrom Municipality in the Ashanti region. I have put up sheds in my spacious living room. That is where I wake up at dawn to nest the crops. But 
ineffective processing and short-term storage techniques have flared up post-harvest losses. Growers and processors record little remuneration as a result. So we do need to fresh and this is to fresh a juma ebe fakoton. You cannot rely on the sale of the fresh produce. What if we enter the rainy season? The retailers fail to come. We use a solar dryer to dry the fresh mushrooms before we process it into other fruits. To prevent wastage when the crop is in season, Nanaminta Farms extracts juices from the mushroom, adds other ingredients and makes it into fruit juices. Prince Minta is Chief Executive Officer. After cultivating mushrooms for years, I realized when the mushrooms are in season, we record much spoilage. We decided to extract the juice from it and process it into fruit juice. On the other hand, Juliana Amwakon produces Tom Brown in flour after processing the mushroom. She plans to export her product but has little hands in the value addition process. You will have to cultivate on a large scale if you want to make much profit. As the business grows, you will need more labor and machines for processing. For me, I wake up early dawn to attend to my customers. My workers cannot keep up, so many have left. Valley chain management of mushrooms can offer opportunities for employment. Many hands are needed for drying, pickling, steeping, preservation.